Hi everybody, in this video we are going to discuss about the helminthic diseases. Helminthic diseases. And we should remember that these are a group of worms that are present. Okay, these are a group of worms that are present, which we commonly call them as helminths. We call them as helminths. Okay, helminths are nothing but which constitute of worms, which constitute of worms. And these can be of two types again. Okay, helminths can be of two types. One are called as what the flat worms. Okay, one type, one group is called as the flat worms, which belong to the phylum platy helminthes, which belong to the phylum platy helminthes. They belong to the phylum platy helminthes. And uh, there is another uh, group of worms which are coming under the helminths. Okay, another group of worms called as the round worms. Called as the round worms, and these belong to the phylum nematoda, which belong to the phylum. Nematoda, okay, which belong to the family nematoda, belong to the phylum nematoda, or otherwise it is also called as the Aschilmenthes, it is also called as Aschilmenthes, or otherwise it is also called as Nematic Helminthes, okay, Nematic Helminthes, okay, it is also called as the Nematic Helminthes, okay, this is another word or for used for phylum Nematic Helminthes. So, here in this session, in this video, we are going to discuss about the diseases which are caused by the round worms. Means diseases caused by the nematoda. Diseases caused by the nematoda, which are comprising of what the round worms. Okay, we are going to discuss about the diseases caused by the nematoda, which are consisting of what round worms, which are consisting of the round worms. So here, if you are looking at the general characteristics of these round worms. Okay, we should have now because general characteristics are very important to identify that particular organism. So that's why it is better to keep these general characteristics in identifying that particular organism causing diseases. So here the basic or uh, simple general characteristics of the round worms are here. These round worms are circular. Because they are circular, that's why they are called as what round worms. Circular and in cross section we are called them as what? The round worms. Okay. These are circular, so hence they are called as the round worms. And if you are looking at these okay, round worms, they are free living. They are free living, found everywhere. They are found everywhere. Aquatic, they are present even in the water. Terrestrial, they are present on the land. And moreover, what is important in this session is that they are as parasitic. They are as parasitic, which means they are there are some round worms which can cause what diseases, which can cause diseases. Diseases is it to the plants or animals? Means there are round worms which can cause diseases both to the plants and even in the animals also. Both in plants and animals they can cause diseases. So that's why we are calling these as what parasitic also. There are some round worms which are parasitic because they can infect both plants and also animals causing diseases. So at the same time if you are looking at their body organization, if you are looking at their body organization, they show organ system level of organization. It is not cellular, it is not tissue level but it is what organ system level of organization which consists of cells and tissues and organs in this particular Phylum, okay, particular phylum called as nematoda or otherwise we are calling it as what? Aschilmenthes or otherwise nematic helminthes. Okay, all these togetherly, which is the same phylum which we are which under which what is coming? Round worms. Okay, round worms. So here these organisms are exhibited bilaterally symmetrical. They are bilaterally symmetrical, which means what they can be divided into two equal halves passing through the central plane or by any plane okay passing through any plane if we can divide the organism into two equal halves it will be called as what bilateral symmetrical we are calling it as the bilateral symmetrical and another word is that we have to remember regarding the round worms is they are triploblastic they are exhibiting what another characteristic triploblastic which means they show or they possess three germ layers they show or they possess three germ layers. What are those three germ layers we say? Ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Those are the three germ layers which, which can be seen in this group of uh, 
organisms called as roundworms belonging to the phylum Nematoda. Otherwise, Ascalbentis. Otherwise, Nematihelminthes. We are calling them as. And now, the other one is that they are also pseudocelomates. We can call them as what? They are pseudocelomates. Pseudocelomates means what? This word pseudo is very common word. Pseudo means what? This is false. Okay, false. So they have the false cavity. They will be showing false cavity. And now, if you are looking at the elementary canal, okay, if you are looking at the elementary canal, they will be showing muscular pharynx. Elementary canal is containing what or consisting of muscular pharynx, okay, muscular pharynx. And when they are present, okay, when they are present inside of an organ as a parasite in, in the organism, they also possess the excretory pores through which they eliminate the base material from their body. So for excretion, what do they have means? They have the excretory pores to eliminate the waste from their body. And moreover, a very important one is the dioecious. So what do you mean by the word dioecious? When there are, when the sexes are separately found, when the sexes are found separately, we call, we use the word dioecious. So here, round worms are having two sexes found separately, which means one male will be there and one female will be there. Now, how to distinguish male from the female? Here, very simple point is that the female will be looking longer than the male. As it is seen in this diagram, here is the female which is looking very long than the male. Whereas the male is short than the female. So, this is the simple basic identification of identifying the round worms with round worms which is uh, the female and the male and at the same time the male will be having one curved end okay at one end it is having a curved end so that is regarding the dioecious and the last point here we have to remember under the general characteristics is that they show internal fertilization fertilization will be taking place internally Fertilization will be taking place internally. So these are all the basic points or general characteristics which we should keep in mind when we talk about the round worms as one group which are coming under what helmets. The other one is what flat worms we said. So these two are helmets which are coming under the helminthic diseases. So that's why we are calling them as helminthic diseases. Helminthic diseases. So. Diseases caused by nematodes. Diseases caused by nematodes. Already said under the phylum nematodes, what will be coming? Round worms. Okay, round worms. And please remember another word for nematodes is what we are calling them as Ascalmentis or Nematihelminthes. So here we are going to discuss about the disease which is caused by the round worms. We are going to discuss about the disease which is caused by the round worms. The name of the disease, okay, the name of the disease is Ascariasis. The name of the disease is Ascariasis. And this disease is caused by what we said, round worms. What is the name of that round worm? The name of the pathogen is Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, Ascaris lumbricoides we are calling it as. So you know why we are using the word pathogen. It's a very familiar word now for all of us. That is what? Diseases causing organism is called as the pathogen. So this is an organism which is causing a disease. What is the disease it is causing? Ascariasis. Name the organism or name the pathogen which is causing the disease Ascariasis. Answer is Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris lumbricoides causes which disease? Ascaris. So the name itself gives us the clear information about that particular disease. So here. The name of the disease is Ascariasis and name of the pathogen is Ascaris lubricoides. Now, host and infection. Host and infection. How or in whom this disease will be caused? Now, here we have to remember that this the host is the humans. Okay, the host is what? The humans. Host is the humans. Okay, it is affecting what or it is a uh, completing its life cycle in whom means it is in the humans and humans it is present as an endoparasite it is present as an endoparasite and we already learned in the very beginning about what we mean by endoparasite 
parasites which are living inside the body we are calling them as what endoparasites parasites which are living outside the body are called as ectoparasites we say so this is an endoparasite so as that is rubricoids are endoparasites okay endoparasites endoparasite where it is pre present inside the body please remember it is affecting this is present or infecting the digestive system but inside in the digestive system which part is being infected by this ascaris lumbricoids causing ascariasis is the main thing and here we have to remember that in it is infecting the digestive digestive system mainly the small intestine it is infecting what the small intestine please remember these worms when they are many in number they can easily block the path of the small intestine and form severe discomfort severe discomfort so it is an endoparasite present in what the small intestine present in the small intestine and this disease is a very common okay this is a very common okay let me say very common in the children it is very common in children so now the question is why in children why it is very common in children simple reason children will be showing more interest to play in the mud or clay or in the soil so when they are playing in the soil which is infected with what eggs okay eggs of ascaris if there are eggs of ascaris present in what the soil then that's why we say that it is more common in whom children why it is more common in children because the children will be playing in the soil and if the soil okay consists of eggs of ascaris then there are chances that they may be entering into the body and may cause ascariasis they may cause they may cause what ascariasis so let us say now to be very clear let us say that it is infected soil okay infected soil let us say this is infected soil so when they are playing in infected soil unknowingly then there are chances that they will be suffering with this disease ascariasis but otherwise the second stage okay second stage is the uh, by which uh, this disease uh, okay will be carried or caused okay or is caused is called as juvenile okay the juvenile also known as embryonated eggs also known as embryonated eggs we call it as embryonated eggs so the second stage is what juvenile second stage is juvenile so what we are saying the second stage is what juvenile or otherwise we are calling we can call this as what embryonated egg embryonated egg it is also called as the embryonated egg and please remember this is very very important this is very very important because it is infective stage okay it is infective stage please remember this infective stage please remember it's very very important okay infective stage of man is what embryonated egg otherwise we are calling it as juvenile okay juvenile otherwise we are calling it as embryonated egg which is infective stage of man okay which is infective stage of man and please remember there is no host okay there is no secondary host which means in simple this particular organism called as ascaris lumbricoides is completing its life cycle within one host that is what the humans that is the humans more common in children but otherwise it is also infecting elders others also okay but here it is completing its life cycle in the humans only in the humans so that's why we can call this as what the monogenetic we can call this as the monogenetic please remember this word monogenetic so here these are the simple points we have to remember the name of the disease is what ascariasis name of the organism or the pathogen causing this disease ascaris lumbricoides host and infection if you are seeing it is infecting the humans it is infecting the humans and completing its life cycle within the humans so we are calling it as what monogenetic we are calling it as monogenetic in humans it is very common in children we are saying why it is very common in children it is there are chances it is because that there are chances that the ch children will be playing may be playing in infected soil infected soil with what eggs of ascaris so there are chances that they may enter into the body and can cause this this is called as ascaris 
but otherwise who are infected means it is the humans and the second stage is what we are saying juvenile also known as what embryonated stage embryonated stage and this embryonated egg okay embryonated egg is the one which we call it as what infective stage please remember infective stage that is very important for all of us and in the next video we are going to discuss about how it is causing the pathogenicity and what is the treatment for this particular disease called as ascariasis so we will study in the next video about pathogenicity and the treatment that is given for this particular disease called as ascariasis thank you so much